Okay, so this is our video on B1 topic E, and this is drugs and you. Uh, it's also got a little bit on smoking on it as well. It just falls into the same category, really. Right, so we need to be having a look at the types of things that drugs can do to our bodies. So just to be very clear, when we say drugs, we are simply talking about chemicals that change the way that the body or the brain works. When we use the word drug, there is absolutely no implication about whether it's legal or not. It simply says that it changes the way our body works. So drugs can be beneficial or harmful. Um, I'm sure we're aware of this already. Uh, the most common types of beneficial drugs would be the ones that you get prescribed. Now we have to know why some drugs are prescribed where some aren't. So for instance, if you um, have a headache, you can go to the pharmacy and you can buy some paracetamol and that's absolutely fine whereas if you need something like codeine which is a much stronger painkiller you'd need to have a prescription for it and the reasons or the way it's decided which types of drugs have to be prescribed are to do with whether or not they have major side effects whether or not they could interfere with other medicines if they could be harmful depending on conditions that you might have and if they are particularly harmful if you take too much now, obviously, if you take too much of almost anything, it can be harmful. It's just about how easy it is to take too much and how much damage could be caused by doing so. It's pretty much common sense, really. Um, so, when you take drugs, what they do change is your body's chemistry. So, as we said, they change the way your body works, and they do that by changing the way that chemical reactions happen in your body. Now, this does mean that it's possible to become tolerant to them. So your body stops responding to effects of them. So in order to get the same effect, you start having to take more and more and more of the drug. As is true of any type of drug. And if you take it for too long, your body can become dependent on it. So that means that your body actually cannot work properly unless you're taking the drug. And that is what we call chemical addiction. So addiction has two sides to it. There's the you take it because you really like it. And then there's you take it because your body can't work without it. So as far as we're concerned in this course, addiction is when you take something because your body cannot work properly without it. Now, if you have been taking a drug for a long time and you become addicted, if you stop taking it, you get withdrawal symptoms. So this is your body struggling to cope without the drug that it's become dependent on. So effects of withdrawal can be nausea, diarrhea, hallucinations, vomiting and intense cravings for the chemical that you have stopped taking. So we group drugs into a few different categories. You need to know the types, uh, the group names, be able to give an example of each and say what they do to the human body. So I've put them in a nice little table for you. So let's start with depressants. Now, to be clear, depressants does not mean something that makes you sad. Depressants mean that they block transmitters in your brain, so they block certain sensations. So um, alcohol and solvents are examples of these, and the nice simple way to put it is that they slow down brain activity. So when I say that they block receptors, um, as some of you may know, if you drink alcohol, you tend to notice pain less, and that's because it blocks those receptors in your brain as well. Um, does it ever so slightly differently to the way that painkillers do, because they're our second class? Painkillers, uh, our examples are aspirin and paracetamol, and they work by blocking nerve impulses, so they fill in the synapses for certain receptors in your brain. So they work ever so slightly differently. Um, alcohol happens to do a bit of both, but it does go into the depressant category because of the way it works. Our next family are stimulants. These are ones that increase your brain activity, and everyone's favourite one of those is caffeine, and then closely followed by nicotine, actually. Both basically give you a bit of a buzz because they make your brain work faster. Um, our next type are performance enhancers. Uh, the easy example is anabolic steroids, and basically they just increase muscle development. Uh, they do have an awful lot of side effects, but that's their main function. And then our final group are hallucinogens, and basically they give you hallucinations, so they distort or change what you see or hear. 
and cannabis and LSD fall into this category. So those are the way that we classify drugs. Now, mostly when we're talking about these, they are ways that we classify illegal drugs, but all drugs can be put into these categories. There are a couple more, but you only need to know these ones for the exam. So those are the slightly more scientific ways of classifying drugs. We also need to know a little bit about the way that the law classifies drugs. Uh, there are three classes of illegal drugs that we need to know about. There's class A, which are the most dangerous, examples being cocaine, heroin and LSD. Um, if you're found carrying them, it's a seven years sentence in prison with an unlimited fine. If you're dealing them, you can have up to life imprisonment and an unlimited fine. Class B, which are slightly less dangerous, um, they are amphetamines, cannabis and Ritalin. Uh, penalty for possessing them uh, without prescription, I should add. Ritalin is a prescription drug. If you have a prescription for it, that's fine. But if you have it without, you can have, if you just have it, you can have up to five years in prison with an unlimited fine. And if you're dealing these, it's up to 14 years in prison with an unlimited fine. And then the final class are class C, uh, class C drugs. They are the least dangerous of the three, but still illegal. Uh, Tamazepam, which is another prescription drug, and anabolic steroids are examples of these. And uh, you can have up to two years for being found with these, and if you're dealing them, it's up to 14 years again. So those are the legal classifications for drugs. And that's pretty much all we need to know about them. You don't need to worry too much about remembering exactly how many years it is for each. You just need to have the understanding that A is more serious than C and be able to give an example for each class. OK, so quick word on smoking. We've already spoken in an earlier topic about how smoking introduces carbon monoxide to your bloodstream, which reduces your body's ability to carry oxygen around. Uh, we also need to talk about the fact that cigarette smoke contains chemicals that stop the cilla in the linings of the lungs and throat from moving. So basically these are kind of like little hairs that help remove um, phlegm and catarrh and all the nastiness and it helps just stop them clogging up your lungs but cigarette smoke stops them from doing their job. So when smokers have that horrible hacking cough it's because dust particles are irritating the lining of their lungs from the smoke and also that the mucus that exists in your lungs is not being moved as it should be so it just sits there and so the body has to resort to a cough in order to try and get it to move. Now I'm sure you do know as well, um, I've not mentioned it explicitly, but cigarettes do also contain nicotine which as I mentioned earlier is a stimulant. It's also the thing inside cigarettes that make them addictive and they're not it's not really brilliant for your brain on a long term but there we go so last one we need to talk about is alcohol um, hopefully you know that alcohol is measured in units so when we talk about how much alcohol is contained in something we talk about how many units it has you do need to have an idea of how much is in different types of alcohol but we'll be doing an activity in class about that so can look it up before you come if you want. Show me how well you know your alcohol. Um, I'm sure you also know that drinking alcohol can increase your reaction time. So it's a major reason why, we tell, why you're not supposed to drive if you've had a drink because it reduces, or sorry, it increases the time it takes you to react to something. So you're much more likely to have an accident. Now the other thing with alcohol is that after you've taken it in, as it's broken down, the process of breaking down the alcohol releases toxins and those toxins can build up and damage your liver. Your liver being the thing responsible for cleaning your blood, so it's quite important. Now, if you do get serious damage to your liver, this is called cirrhosis. And again, if you're doing the higher tier, you need to know the word cirrhosis. If you're going for the lower tier, just an explanation that it damages your liver is enough. And do note the spelling, there are two R's and an H in there. Okay, that's about it for this topic. So remember, if you've got any questions, write them down and ask me when you see me. And that's it.